Hello everyone, what's up and welcome back. Mendix 10 was just released, so I wanted to go over 10 of my favorite things about the new version. First up, I'd like to talk about the new look and feel. Most importantly, dark mode is now GA and you can find it easily inside of your preferences before opening up the project. It can now also auto detect your system theme and change accordingly whenever you start up Studio Pro. Don't forget to restart Studio Pro when changing these settings. Another great feature here is the ability to set your default page editor to be in either structure mode or design mode. I'm going to leave mine in design. Studio, of course, has now had its best features brought into Studio Pro. For example, you can now find the start from spreadsheet option when creating a new app. Let's take a quick look and see how it works. I'm going to click create new app and then choose start from spreadsheets. Give it a name. and click create app. Now that it's done, I can just upload my Excel sheet that I created for this. It's read my table, which is just a few columns, and it also has a record here, which is the only record in the sheet. But it's choosing the correct data types, and I can just choose to import data. There we have it, it's created the orders entity in my domain model. Something else that caught my eye is the new updated icon sets for buttons. To see the new icons, simply right click on any button and choose select icon. The old icons had just become a bit outdated and it was time for a refresh. If you can't find what you're looking for, don't forget you can create your own icon sets by uploading font files into your app. Next, I wanted to show you all the ML kit, which allows you to easily add a machine learning model to your application. To use the ML kit is really easy. You can just add it to a module like any page or microflow. You can right click on the module, look under add other, and then find ML model mapping down here. Give it a name. I'm just gonna leave that default. And then we need to import our model. Now we need to import an ONNX file into your app. I went ahead and downloaded one for free from ONNX's GitHub page, and I can choose to import that now. I'll just choose this model onyx file, and this is a computer vision model which is set up for face detection. Now this expects an input entity and an output entity, and you can see it's created this wonderful mapping document for us, similar to how we create JSON mappings. Now to use this in a microflow is even easier. We can just add a microflow here. And we then just need to add our action to call the ML kit to the flow. Once we have that, we can just select our mapping and then choose an input object. Now I'm just gonna create one quickly. And set this here. It will then give us the output as a result. Of course, Mendix 10 is using Git, so we can commit and push this before we move on. We also have the Solutions Kit, which is based on Git. The Solutions Kit is really cool because it lets you clone apps easily and manage changes between them. Well, at the same time, it allows you to mark some resources as a protected common core, which can't be viewed or edited. This is useful for when you sell solutions to customers because it allows you to protect your company's intellectual property. It allows you to protect certain microflows, modules, or features from being edited or viewed. They're still usable in the project, but it's like a black box to protect your model from the wrong eyes. Next up, we have a new way to make PDFs. Document generation has always been a bit constrained and difficult in Mendix, and that's why there are so many community modules for it. However, now we have the new PDF document generation module, which allows you to turn pages directly into PDFs. If you can make it work on a page, you can turn it into a PDF with this module. It even supports charts and widgets. Of course, with the new Mendix version, there is a new Make It Native app. Make It Native 10 hasn't been released to app stores yet, and until then, you can continue to use Make It Native 9. 
The new Make It Native app features a new design, but most importantly, it has a favorites feature which allows you to save or create a history of IP addresses for apps you test often. This is all just to make your life a little bit easier when testing out native mobile applications. Speaking of native apps, Nanoflows have a new action called Clear From Device. So Clear From Device allows you to remove an entity from your local device's storage um, so that it doesn't clutter up your service domain model. To use it, simply drag it into a Nanoflow and then select the entity you would like it to clear. It's important to remember that these objects are never going to be synchronized to the server, so handle that accordingly. While we're on the subject of flows, microflows also have a new action for aggregating lists. You can now join a list of objects into a single string as an output, um, which is really good for when you want to create like an output string or if you want to format data for an expression in uh, integration or something like that. Unique page URLs has already been around for a while. Now they've been reworked to allow for multiple data parameters in the same URL. The parameters are retrieved by XPath queries so long as the data exists in your domain model. This is really useful for when you want to pass multiple objects, say an order number and an account name, in order to retrieve all of that customer's interaction. For instance, you could pass an order number and a username into a URL, and the XPath would retrieve all of the orders for that customer. Last but not least, we have two new actions for workflows multi-user task and wait for notification. Multi-user task allows you to set multiple users to perform the same task before it can be completed. This is useful for when you have a review process, for instance, where multiple people have to sign off before something can be finalized. Wait for notification can be viewed as an event driven by the user interacting with the system. For example, say there is a point in your workflow where a customer needs to make a payment. Now, with this new action, you can wait for the payment somewhere else in your application, listening via API or some other integration. And then once the payment has been received, you can then notify the workflow that this has happened and the workflow will be allowed to continue. There's a lot more in this version that I haven't mentioned here. So if anyone's interested and would like a full list of features, make sure to read the release notes for everything covered in this release. Or if you don't have time, you can catch the what's new video here on YouTube. That's all for now. Until next time, I'm Ryan Mocky and this is Mendix 10.